All right, welcome everybody. This is Scott Patton. I am your host. I'm really excited to be on with you today because I have a very, very special guest. I've known her for at least 10, if not 15 years. We've done a bunch of different things together. And she said something, I think it was yesterday when we were talking, that um, was just kind of like, yeah, that's exactly what we're all about. And she, what she said was, you know, we have a servant's heart. You have a servant's heart. I have a servant's heart. The person we were talking about has a servant's heart. And it's such an important part to living life uh, fully, whether you've got billions of dollars or whether you have zero dollars. It's You've got a servant's heart. That's really where I believe happiness starts and success starts. And she was born and raised in North Dakota, which I didn't know. I was born a little bit to the uh, east of North Dakota and north, but I grew up in Winnipeg, which is like a stone's throw away from North Dakota. And, and so that explains some of the reasons why we get along so well, because she learned about Midwest values and the benefits of living in small town America. And I had Midwest farmer values, you know, four of my five uncles were farmers and every summer we'd go spend, I'd go spend, two weeks on the farms with my uncles and then my cousins would come back with me to Winnipeg and spend time in the the big city and it was it was great and uh, she moved to the South Pacific at age eight wow like I don't know why we've never talked about this before but I moved to the South Pacific Melbourne Australia in in particular uh, when I was seven (laughs) I spent, she spent eight, four years on an island paradise. I spent two years in Melbourne, Australia. And they said, uh, when I went back, the people that knew us, knew my family from before, uh, said, oh, I remember you. You're the one that was, his, your fingernails were trying to scrape this tarmac as they pulled you on the plane. You didn't want to go, which was true. I would have been quite happy to have grown up in, in Australia and learned to surf. Uh, she spent... Uh, a 25-year career as a critical care nurse, as well as two years as a legal nurse consultant in the San Francisco Bay Area. She founded a medical aesthetic clinic on the peninsula, and success was swift. Running the business operations, as well as providing clinical directorship and primary aesthetic practitioner duties, taught Linda how to envision, strategize, and execute a flourishing entity. It was an amazing success for her. And it lasted for 10 years. So after six years in Southern California, caring for her mom, she recently relocated to beautiful Oregon, where she continues in the entrepreneurial world, assisting various health, wellness, and aesthetic practices and companies with their business growth and development. And that was one of the reasons why I wanted her to come on the show with us today is because I've always been... uh, really cognizant of you need to look after your health now because 20 years goes by like this like i can't believe that i'm not 30 anymore and but a lot of the things that i've done over the last 30 40 years have contributed to the fact that i'm active i'm healthy i'm not having heart attacks or cancers or any of those sort of good things knock on wood and i hope to continue with that so with uh, no further ado Welcome to the show, Linda. How are you doing today? I'm doing just great, Scott. Thanks for that amazing intro. Wow. <laughs> I've done a lot, haven't I? <laughs> you have. You have. It's just amazing. And I can't. So what island in the South Pacific were you on? Um, are you ready for this? Kawajalane in the Marshall Islands. Oh, Wow. Yeah, That's my dad amazing. My dad took a job over there. He was in charge of all the food management for the enlisted guys, for the uh, officers, for the civilians. And it was a Nike Zeus test site. So um, for us as kids, I was eight years old. Oh, my God. All I cared about was that I could wear thongs and shorts to school. And we could walk down the beach and pick up these gorgeous shells you know, I mean, the whole thing was just like, I don't know, Wonderland, especially after North Dakota, where it's kind of, um, well, kind of flat and uh, really hot and humid in the summer and like minus 70 below uh, during the winter. 
Um, we were in a balmy 85, 24-7, 365. It was like heaven on earth. Yeah. I When I went to Australia, I was afraid of getting in a swimming pool. When I came back, I was probably one of the better swimmers in all of Manitoba. I was like a fish. I just loved it. And, uh, well, the water in Australia is God, just as beautiful as it is in the Marshalls. Um I mean, just stunning. Um, going out deep sea fishing, you know, it goes from this pale, pale, light blue to just an indigo blue. And then all of a sudden there's a little outcropping of coral and you're back mm. to like an aqua. I mean, it, it was it was just, I don't know, just a paradise. Uh, dream come true, a paradise, like where you're yeah. living right now. <laughs> like a oh, guy. Well, for those of you who don't know, for the last five years, I've been traveling the world. And right now I'm in Santa Marta, Colombia, which is on the Caribbean coast. And there's beautiful beaches around here. And uh, and the sunsets are amazing. Even though I'm on the east side of South America, the way the, the land and the water goes, you see the sunsets. And last night it was spectacular. So I'm looking forward to tonight's as well. Yes. So, You've been in the health and wellness for a long time, and we've just gone through, um, you know, an awful couple of years when it comes to a lot of people's health. What what would you say are, are like your one or two top things to tell people who really want to make sure that they, you know, stay out of the hospital and are not just surviving, but thriving in terms of their health? I think it just going back to basics, making sure you have great nutrition um, making sure you move. I mean, really and truly. Now I could add to that, right? Water, you know, getting enough sleep, you know, staying away from the bad stuff if you can, you know, or as much as you can. In other words, not uh, maybe um, over drinking and certainly not smoking if you can help it. But basically it just goes back to what we knew way back when, eating healthy and getting some movement in. And I do that every day. I hike up a two mile mountain and back again. And that's how I start my day. And it makes all the difference in the world. It isn't just for the physical, it's for the mental as much as it is for the physical. So I'm a huge believer of movement. Right. Yeah. I love to go for a walk. I made a commitment to go for about a 40 minute walk in the morning and a 40 minute walk in the evening. And um, I don't always succeed, but Boy, it sure makes it. I can tell when I've been sitting and then I start getting up and it's kind of, you start walking, it's kind of like creak, 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 creak. <laughs> yeah, we're at that age, right? <laughs> we're at that age, yeah. <laughs> awesome. So, what keeps you in the health and wellness industry? Because you're definitely an expert in that field. Well, I think it really started in my very, very early 20s. Um, I was introduced to some really high quality supplements and and then I was, it was a day on the job at Stanford Open Heart ICU. I was 21 and my patient was 42 and he had just had a, a quintuple bypass. And I remember saying that day, I said, okay, what do I need to do not to end up here? Right? So I kind of started researching, started at the gym, you know, starting eating better, drinking water, getting sleep, sunscreen, you know, all the good stuff. And even though I was in a very high, high stress, high pharma area being critical care for 25 years, ICU, ER recovery, for myself, I was always on the proactive wellness track. And I mean, we didn't really know what that was back then. You know, it was just doing as much for yourself to keep healthy as possible. I mean, I really do look at my health as my responsibility. Sometimes, you know, when I'm explaining some of the products we have, you know, well, I better check with my doctor. My first thought is, you know, your doctor isn't really going to know what this is for the most part. And it really is up to you. It's your body. It's your health. So, um, yeah, it, there's challenging times with people. But, you know, I think with the right um, guidance, maybe, and the right mentorship, people can, you know, kind of get on track and stay there or get back on track and stay there and not wait for some big medical emergency that sends them to the emergency room that they may or may not even recover from. Yeah, that's a, that's a really important thing. And, and I can just imagine, you know, being in your 20s, seeing the quadruple bypass in such a relatively young 
man and just going like, oh. And you remind me actually of one of the reasons why I left a 20 year career at a grocery chain. I was a store manager and I looked, I was calling up another store manager one day and it, and the assistant said, no, he's not here. And I go, oh, where is he? Oh, he's on a, on a leave. Well, managers never got a, a leave. Like, what was that, right? Turns out he had, I don't know, depression or something, and he was on a, a medical leave, like a mental medical leave for three months and stress, I guess. Yeah. And, and he was 10 years older than me. So then I started looking at, you know, a few of the other guys that were 10 years older than me, and I thought, man, you know, there's a lot of obesity, and a couple of them have had heart attacks, and this guy's stressed out, and... It's kind of, I like juicing, right? Carrots and, and beets and that sort of stuff. And I said, it's kind of like you're the carrot on the counter and you're looking at all the other carrots going through the juicer. I ain't, it ain't going to happen to me. It's the system, right? You can see the inputs, you can see the outputs. And, you know, it's we have a bakeries and they're full of donuts and apple turnovers and good smelling cheesecake. And, you know, and when we got together to talk about business, it was at a bar with beer and whiskey. So, you know, the whole thing was just, I'm sure I'd have had a heart attack and been gone a long time ago if, if I'd have stayed on that path, right? Yeah. And, but, you know, and when you were talking, I thought, yeah, you like move your body, you know, drink some water, eat good, don't smoke. And it's just like, it's sound, it's simple but so difficult for so many people to do because you just look around and everybody's drinking and everybody's eating the wrong type of well processed foods and everything else. So um, do you ever sort of think, ah, oh, why bother? Um, I suppose it's kind of hit me from time to time, you know, working ER, you know, the guys would come in uh, short of breath, COPD, emphysema, and they would, um, they'd have a cigarette pack in their little pocket, you know, and my heart would go out to them. I've never been a smoker, but I can only imagine. I mean, it's very, very, very addictive. And I never let that get in the way of me giving, you know, an excellence of care, you know, not, you know, having a preconceived notion or being critical. And I've tried to kind of carry that into the health and wellness realm. Um, and, you know, every now and then, you know, of course, it gets a little bit uh, challenging, we'll call it, you know, when you go over the same information with somebody over and over, and it's like, <laughs> they're still at square one. Um, I mean, it, that's heartbreaking. But, you know, the old saying, we can only lead people to water we can't make him drink. So, right. I mean, I do my best and I try to live my life as an example because people run into me and they go, oh, there's no way you're that age. Right. And I think, you know, to me, it's not an ego thing. It's a, yeah, kind of, you know, yes, I was blessed with good genes. Okay. But it's, what do you do with those genes? And I was right. always proactive. And so I don't know, I just try to be the beacon of light, you know, and like, like you said in the beginning, be a, be a servant, you know, have a servant's heart and be understanding. I mean, every now and then I get off a call and go, right. <laughs> but, no, but I get yeah. over it and say, Hey, I hope I, I hope I got to them this time. Right. And um, then I'm here. <laughs> I, yeah. You reminded me, like, I've never, I've never smoked and I've never even had a, a cigarette in my mouth or or a joint being spending the last 30 years in British Columbia. We're known for, you know, the cannabis. No. And my earliest memory ever is being on the farm with my family and my uncles and being like three and a half, four, four and a half, like in there somewhere, I don't know. And looking up, seeing my uncle and he was smoking. And I, I think it was a cigar, right? And he looks at me and I'm looking at him and he doesn't say anything, well, that I recall. He just hands me the cigar. So I go, oh, okay, well, uncle did it. I'll do it. <sighs> I just about died. And that was it. Nothing ever burning <laughs> comes anywhere near my mouth. Best thing my uncle ever did for me. 
And, uh, you know, it's just funny how big an influence our family can have on us. Well, and also friends. I mean, I was 12 and all my friends were hanging out in the park in San Bruno, California and puffing away on cigarettes. So I took two puffs. Oh my God. I ran off into the trees and threw up. Mm. And of course I was horrified. It was like, I was a failure (laughs) and oh my God, am I ever glad that happened? Because never again, never again, my brother, neither one of us, both parents. Yes. And that was so typical, you know, in the forties and fifties and and sixties for everyone just to, and then the tippling of the martini and, you know, it was a lifestyle. And I guess I just realized early on that I just didn't need that, you know, and, you know, I've lived a good life. I mean, am I pure as driven snow? No. I mean, I've, you know, done some fun stuff along the way, you know, growing up just south of San Francisco in the late sixties, you know, but I got it out of my system and realized that, yeah, I didn't want that lifestyle. Right. So one of the reasons I invited you on the show, Linda, was because you've been working with uh, an amazing company, uh, Q Sciences, and we wanted to talk a little bit about how uh, they can really help people with their health. Yeah, it actually stands for, the Q is quintessential, am I saying it right? Quintessential, that's a hard one, uh, sciences, and it was actually quintessential um, biosciences, and so they shortened it to Q Sciences maybe four years ago. Um, I was drawn to them, gosh, when they had their uh, kind of pre-opening back in 2012, and it just wasn't good timing for me. So about um, a month or so ago, a good friend of mine said, hey, take a look at this. I said, oh my gosh, I kind of was with them years ago. But they, of course, have come miles and miles from then. And they've just got amazing products at this point. I just sort of want to highlight the fact that the two founders have done this company themselves. There's no outside money, self-funded. Great, great two guys. I mean, one is a little older, highly successful businessman. The other one is 40-year-old and he's like, the face of the company and outgoing and, and all of that, get everybody excited. Um, But the products that I'm really excited about are, are several things, but primarily the liquid collagen. Um, You know, it's not just for beauty. Uh, We have something called rebuild and that actually helps all of the body structures, even neurologically. And all the ingredients, um, our, our products are formulated by, and medical doctor, and also he is also a naturopath, which I love. So we're getting the medical, traditional, and we're getting the natu- naturopathy, which actually focuses holistically. Um, there is the- Linda, what does the collagen do? Well, a collagen is a protein and it rebuilds all the body structures. And as we age, <laughs> we're kind of missing some of that now. I'm gonna, I'll refer to myself and we need a little boost. Um, so I wanted to talk about this bottle right here because this is called Reform. And it actually can help neurologically, uh, even down to the feet. I don't know if anyone's heard wow. of the disease called neuropathy, but what happens a lot of times diabetics and other, you know, a little bit older people get this numbness, numbness and tingling in the bottom of their feet Sometimes it goes so far as they can't feel the ground that their feet are on. They're usually put on a very, very strong pharmaceutical called gabapentin. My mom was on that when I arrived in the desert 2014, and I got her off of that in about a year. Um, And with this product and one other product, which which is the um, flagship product called Qcore, people have been coming off their medication because they can now feel their feet. And that just makes me so happy. I mean, you have no idea when somebody can have a really significant change in a health issue. There you go. Q core. Um, this, they've made this so easy. There's packs in there for AM and PM. You get full nutrition. And I'm telling you, if you're not eating healthy, this actually can make up for it. And I usually don't say that. I don't like to fall back on that. I want you to eat healthy too. But this is a deal breaker here. I mean, we're talking major nutrition. 
people are just saying in, in five to seven days, they are feeling an improvement in their health. That rocks my boat. I mean, if you are, are taking maybe stuff that you got at Costco or, you know, Walgreens, I'm, I shouldn't, I shouldn't diss them because they're good in many ways. But, you know, if you want really high powered, high quality nutritionals, you've got to go with a group of people that know, you know, what they're doing. So Dr. Kimberly is the formulator, as I said before, MD, ND, and he was the editor in chief of WebMD for 15 years. So does he know his stuff? Um, yeah, he knows That's all impressive. the traditional. Yep. And all the holistic. That means a lot to me. So as far as product goes, I'm sold. Awesome. So the collagen isn't just like on the face. It's throughout the whole. I didn't know that. I just thought it was like. It's botox. liquid. No, so you're no. drinking it. You take two tablespoons of one in the morning and two tablespoons of the other one, which is for the beauty part. And that's the reform. So we've got rebuild and reform and right. makes a big difference. I'll tell you, you can see a change in seven days. Um, they also have some skincare products and that was my you know, world for pretty much right. 20 years. And I'm pretty picky on my product. So Again, stamp of approval. Now, this company has products for kids, for men, for women, for teens, pre-workout, post-workout. They've got terpenes. They've got um, um, all of the hemp products. They've got uh, under the tongue, sublingual sprays, um, just full oh. gamut, 65 products. And we're open in 26 countries already. So you being the world traveler. I was going to ask you. Know, I'm it's kind of nice. because I'm all over the place so they can yep. I, I can check and see what closest country they ship to if not the one I'm in and that would be awesome well the beauty of that is if you're in the EU they ship out of Amsterdam if you're in Australia oh they ship out of Australia um, Mexico Mexico Canada Canada so you go down the line we're opening in Asia right. right at the beginning of the year so there's already distribution in Malaysia uh, Japan, South Korea, Philippines, and soon a, uh, India. So huge. Oh, nice. A worldwide company. That's awesome. Global. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about the, uh, the, the, um, the business model that they're using to distribute the products. Well, it's direct sales, um, person to person. And I've been involved in the industry since 1996 on and off had quite a bit of success and I kind of know what to look for in a company. I've discussed some of it already. Uh, the founders, the product, the people, you know, that are involved, the leadership in the field, amazing. Um, comp plan is amazing. I got to say, I've seen a lot, done a lot in the industry. And this one is pretty spectacular, very unusual. Um, it's all volume based and it really doesn't matter where, a new person comes into your organization, the point value rolls up through everyone, even through down to infinity. So this is a company where if you kind of follow the system and maybe you're coachable and listen to your mentor and work with your mentor, you can do very, very well. Um, I, I joined July 1 and I've already ranked four or five, five times as of today, I think. And I'm hoping to do six by the end of the month. And that's my goal. And I won't go into what the ranks are. Just know that the money is there. And my thrill is to help other people come in their first week. And a week later, they their product has been paid for. And they've got a little extra in the following week. They've got extra, extra. And right now with people, you know, we've been through a pandemic, as you mentioned. And, yep. you know, money can be tight. The cost of goods sold, of food, gas, gasoline, up, up, up. You know, and if you are, are used to living on X and now you have to come up with an extra 500 a month, this is a great way to do it. It's a great way to help your family out. Great way to give you a little bit more breathing room, a little more money at the end of the month instead of just bills. <laughs> and right. um, it's fun. <laughs> awesome. Um, so just getting back into the health aspect of it, 
there's for me there's always like two things one is energy levels and the other is waist circumference <laughs> with some yeah. people it's hip but for me it's waist so does q science have uh, energy type products that aren't um of caffeine i guess aren't bad for you <laughs> yes for you. yes there's all sorts of product like that and there's something called trim and trim plus ah, okay and it's they came out with trim like three years ago and the trim plus is now just being like introduced to the public after a full year of testing with guinea pigs i wasn't part of it wish i would have been to take off the extra 10 but uh, Trim Plus is a lot more potent, I guess, without all the crazy caffeine, as you mentioned, et cetera. Um, and I know one person in my team, she doesn't need to lose weight at all. Good, you know, lucky girl. Uh, but her husband took off 16 pounds in, I want to say, seven weeks. Wow. Which was pretty fast. Yeah, and he probably. didn't change anything else. So yeah, that is like the holy grail, you yeah. know, because I keep I hear that. And then, you know, I try the product and it's like, I don't know. Did I double my chocolate cake intake during this <laughs> period of time? Right. Uh, so this could be the answer. Um, I always encourage people to kind of be, you know, cautious of what you're eating as well. But, you know, I mean, if you want to do a true test, I guess just keep doing what you're doing, add this and see what it does. Well, and I think you, the other thing, the other side of this is instead of just doing what you've been doing, like like I would say in my case, if I keep doing what I've been doing, I'm going to be bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and if you if you get something like the trim plus, you you know, you make a commitment just getting it. That's part of the commitment to a better, healthier you, right? So then, you know, look at, are you drinking water or are you drinking beer? Are you eating donuts or are you eating carrots? And then, like, one of my friends was talking about habits and they, they said, you know, you cannot get rid of a habit. You want to stop smoking, you want to stop that smoking habit, you can't stop it. You can replace it. So you hear people that eat carrot sticks instead of smoking or they... They have they chew on their <clears throat> they chew on the end of their pen like they need something in the mouth, uh, you know. And if it's something that's not burning, that's an improvement, right? Right. So I think I think if you if you're serious about you know weight loss, then get something like Trim Plus and take a look at the food that you're eating and how much of it that you're eating, and then start making those substitutions. Right. Like my question always is. You know, I love muffins, so what can I eat instead of a muffin? When I'm in the grocery store, what could I buy and have instead of a muffin? And hopefully it's not a tart, <laughs> you know, or a donut. Hopefully it's like fruits and vegetables uh, or non-processed foods as opposed to, uh, to process, you know, Kit Kats and go from there. Yeah, and I, I think with that one example, I think um, just getting a high density bread, you know, can satisfy that carb need. And if it's really well made, I mean, the ingredients can have a little bit of sweetness to it. So that's, you know, kind of what I look at. And if you're trying to replace something, I mean, if you're if you want to replace a bowl of ice cream. Well, I guess you could do frozen yogurt, but you could also think about maybe some uh, cubes of watermelon mm, or, right. or a, a nectarine. And, you know, even if you just do it five out of seven days and you have your ice cream two days. <laughs> um, improvement, right? Yeah. And I think movement also, you know, if you change just one thing, if you change just one thing to make yourself healthier, it seems like it's just automatic that all the rest of it changes too. It's interesting you said you brought up the thick, healthy bread because <clears throat> uh, before I was in Santa Marta, I was in Medellin and I was in a mall and there was a bakery. No, it wasn't a bakery. It was uh, a health food store and they had bread on one of the shelves, right? And this bread was one third the size 
of an ordinary white uh, slice of bread, right? And I think it, I think it either had like a raisin or a cranberry or something in it. I'm not sure what. And then maybe a little nut, nutty thing, because it was, it was like when you chewed on it, you were chewing bread, but then all oh, like that's not bread. That's like a nut or, or a raisin. And I'll tell you, you know, I would have like one slice of that, and that was my carb craving was gone, right? As opposed to like two muffins or, you know, or, or two donuts or bread. two whatevers, right? Yeah, yeah. It was, just, <laughs> it was just amazing. I'd be like, oh, I need something. And then I'd take this, I'd put a little organic butter on it, and then I'd go, oh, that was really good. And I'm, and that's, it's like the dogs running when they got to go out to pee, right? And then when they're done, they just lay. <laughs> I'm the same way, right? Back and forth, I need my carb. And then when I have it, it's just like, oh, I'm relaxed. And it's not really advisable to like do no carbs, you know, the no carb thing and the high protein thing and this and that. For me right now, for the last six months, I've been really happy doing intermittent fasting. Mm. And for me, it just works. So I do a meal at 10, 10, 30, 11 in the morning after I get out exercise, you know, and then I have another meal at 4, 30 or five and I can eat whatever I want on those two meals. And that to me works. If I'm always saying, oh, you can't have this, you can't have that, you can't have, oh God, you can't have that. You know, if I want to have a taco on Taco Tuesday, that's what I'm going to have. <laughs> so I've made it work. And yeah. I do have dessert. I just don't overdo it. You know, right. I think that's the key to success. And the older we get as our metabolism starts slowing even more, um, you know, it's even more challenging. So right. I have to up a little bit more instead of three miles. Now it's four. And, you know, I just have to adjust out and I don't even necessarily have to go on a scale. When I got back from my trip to Portugal uh, this last May, shoot, we had walked so much that I lost two pounds. And believe you me, I ate whatever I wanted while I was there. Yeah. yeah. Drink wine, have beer, you know, whatever I wanted. So, um, you know, I think movement has a lot to do with it. I really do. Absolutely. And I'm really excited where I am in Santa Marta because about five blocks that way is a little restaurant and they have a uh, ensalada aguacate, which is an avocado salad. So it's salad, it's nice. avocado and uh, tomatoes and lettuce and a few other things. And I had it yesterday and I thought, oh, this is really good. And what I want to do when I travel, because I don't always have a kitchenette, where I am. I'm only here for a few days, so it's just a regular hotel. But I want to make sure that I'm ordering salads instead of hamburgers <laughs> <You know? laughs> and and French fries and that sort of stuff. And and so I found this place and it was a just a delicious, delicious salad. So and that's and what getting in your healthy fats is very important. So the avocado. Yeah. It's really good for you. It's good for your heart. It's good for your brain, you know? Yeah. So um, everybody, oh, I can't eat any fat. Oh, no, you can. Salmon, wonderful. Yeah. yeah. The fatty fishes and also avocado, nuts. I mean, even even cashews. Oh, God, My they're favorite. so good. My <laughs> you know? <is> <laughs> there, I don't think there are any packages of cashews in Colombia. Yeah, there's, peanuts. there's peanuts everywhere, but I don't see any um, almonds or cashews or hazelnuts or anything else. Yeah. <laughs> so make do with what you have. Right. Uh, so, Linda, I want to really thank you for coming on the show. Really appreciate you sharing everything. And if somebody wanted to get a hold of you and um, know more about Q Sciences or, or talk to you maybe about ways that the products can help them, uh, what should they do? Um, I think you have my email, so we can put that up. I'm yeah. happy to answer any questions. Like I said, I've been at this for, well, I mean, I became a nurse in 1975, and I've seen a lot of uh, results of not taking care of. So, you know, I'm here to help people take care of themselves and get on the right track and stay there, feel good about their life, and be vi vibrant into their 70s, 80s, and 90s. So, Yes, please reach out to me, Linda at accesshealth360.com. And, and Linda, you're going to have to 
in a couple decades be expanding that to in the hundreds because two of my grandparents one was 102 and one was 103 when they passed away yeah. so my goal is to beat grandma because she made it to 103 so wow and i'll be right there with you yes that's right <laughs> so before we go one last tip for for everybody watching well, we haven't talked too much about stress. You mentioned it when you were working in the grocery business. I'd have to say, think about ways to reduce your stress, which is going to add a whole another level of health to your life, uh, whether it be meditation, the exercise, the sleep, music. I love music. Music can help de-stress so quickly. And of course, relationships with family and friends. And, um, you know, enjoy your life like Scott's doing at the beautiful island he's on. You know, we need to have some downtime. We need to enjoy nature and get reconnected with who we really are and who we were born to be. So I'm going to say, you know, live your best life and, you know, explore, be curious, be adventurous and live. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, everybody. And we'll see you next time. Bye for now.